Well, yeah. I mean, we recorded the other day for the GT podcast, so Jeff had gone through and done everything. So oh. <laughs> it's kind of funny how the sound works just fine for us. Yeah. <laughs> Man, it's, it's always great when you let somebody else do it. <laughs> yeah, he did the hard work, which I guess it's really not that hard to adjust those. No, probably not. But uh, no, it, it's like He's used good. it a little bit more than you have. <laughs> yeah, that is that is fair. It was his, right? <laughs> yeah, it's his. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, so so Rick. Yes. It's Dead Zone the Podcast. Time. It is Dead Zone the Podcast. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is like two recordings in two weeks. That's nuts. Yeah, yeah, we did uh, we did our, our interview. Yes. Well, we, we, should, we should actually like welcome the show first, and then we'll start talking about things. Are we ever going to do that right? <laughs> this is Dead Zone the Podcast. I'm, I'm Ryan. Ryan. <laughs> I'm apparently Rick now. Yeah, sure. That works. Welcome to the Dead Zone Podcast. Dead Zone is the sci-fi table top. you're listening to us <laughs> <laughs> and that is the intro to deads on the podcast yeah so if you are just joining us <laughs> for the first time uh we apologize in advance no we uh, don't why would we apologize for the fact that we do the same episodes we intro and the way we record our podcast why apologize for that it's what we do <laughs> Okay, yeah, so we're not going to apologize for that. <laughs> that's it's your fault <laughs> no it's your fault okay <laughs> now we're pointing fingers on a on a radio show. <laughs> exactly. So, um, but yeah, we we did uh, get a, a quick little uh, interview in here uh, at the beginning of the month with uh, Ronnie Renton with himself. Ronnie himself, yeah. So, if you haven't checked out that episode, definitely recommend it. It's always great catching up with Ronnie, yes. and uh, and he had a whole bunch of, of new goodies to tell new us about. Goodies. So, did you catch the whole another starter for? Dead Zone in February? I did. I was like, wow, he went past that really fast. Yeah, um. he that right. To be fair, what is that? I gave I gave him that out. It's like, hey, if you, you happen did. to say anything that you need to walk back, you know, just let me know. Uh, I think, and, and it's kind of funny, so we had that, uh, we recorded the episode talking about Terrain Crate last yeah. time, Yep. and I did go, you know, uh, Post edit. <laughs> Brian <laughs> did in fact chime in to say, "Yeah, it just happened, and it was very successful. <laughs> it was very successful." So yeah, the the terrain crate, um, and I, I think they actually have it uh, open on backer kits, uh, or they they they're it's not running it for a little. It's longer. running for a little bit longer on backer kit. Yeah, um, they haven't released the manager thing yet. Right, right. Um, I'm eagerly waiting for that to pop so I can get a new map. <laughs> yeah. Because the the three and four maps, I I need those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need those for firefight. We really do. All right, I I definitely do. Because I like the biggest map I have is actually my Vanguard one, which is three by three. Which is three by three. Yeah. Um. So, and uh, but no, it it it's uh, it was really successful, and I think it's we as we talked about before, it's a great product line. It's it's a great retail product line. Yes. Um. Which is which is something that you know. It, it, we've kind of talked about before, like yep. sometimes running Kickstarter projects where you kind of give away the farm, as it were. Uh, yeah, uh, kind of ruins the retail side of things. Yeah, um, and, but the way they did this one, like, yeah, if you jump in on the Kickstarter, sure, you're gonna get it cheaper. Yeah, um, but it's gonna go to retail and it's gonna sell incredibly well at retail as well. Oh yeah, yeah. Terrain Crate's been a great line, and it's it's really fun to see more of the sci-fi stuff. Yeah, I, I know we didn't. Uh, you know, we tried to put the screws to him and get uh, an answer on where that alien 
uh, terrain came from, but uh, I think we'll just we we'll have to, to flavor that ourselves. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, Mr. Ryder over there, I'm sure you can flavor it just fine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the other big news that just happened is so it's not Warpath Dead Zone related, but the so they had the unfortunate failure on the Kings of War role playing game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but just recently. Uh, Mantic sent out an email to all of the backers mm-hmm. uh, with everything that they compiled, everything that had been done yeah. by the Tricor system and everything in Red Scar Publishing, is, yeah, yeah. Um, and sent it to all of us backers. That's awesome. Along with the STLs for the original models that they released for it, that they were going to build. Nice. Um, but they also told all of us that if they do a Kings of War role playing game, whether it's a 5e mm-hmm. or whatever, they find a new publisher or whatever, yeah. those backers are going to get a copy of that. That's which really I cool. thought was really cool of Ronnie to do. Yeah. Um, because I I mean, and of course there's a lot of stuff out there about the whole failure on the Kickstarter. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mantic wasn't a part of that. No. No, it's... And unfortunately, there's that mix of, oh, this is Mantic's failure. It's like, well, technically, no. No. <laughs> it's not. But they are... they are. It was the IP. They are stepping up to make it right. Yes, they um, are. Which is which is very big of them. And uh, I, I think definitely continues to go and show, like, they are really there for their customers and the people that support yeah, them. Exactly. They really go that extra mile uh, where they can. So yeah. that, that's really awesome that they, they released that. I thought it was stuff. really cool they did that. Um, so the other reason why I kind of tossed that in there is because, so obviously I'm going to point at it because they can hear us. Uh, Brian has a Christmas present that I stole my daughter's wrapping present for. <laughs> it's, it's the nightmare before Christmas for anyone wondering. <laughs> um, you should open that real quick. Yeah. So, yes. so now you I make all the noises. Dead's on the podcast ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> Wrinkle, 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 wrinkle. Yes, I got you tea. Tea. <laughs> it's a box of tea. It's a box of tea. Constant comment by Big Love. <laughs> Black tea. Inside there. <laughs> this is wrapping paper. <laughs> it's, it's Stitch. Stitch wrapping paper. Stitch wrapping paper. And inside there whew, is ooh. so that is some of the sci-fi terrain. Yeah, so so uh, th- this is one of the the plant uh, tree tree things. monster looking <laughs> things uh, that are that are going to be in this terrain crate. And the detail on that is crazy. Oh yeah, it is. And this is why it's when when sharp. I was talking to you about it, it was like, yeah, this isn't for your printer. <laughs> <laughs> no. And it has a nice little, it, like it's, it's got a rounded yep. bottom. Uh, so, but it has, it comes with a little, little standy. Yeah. And so the whole point of those stands is because there's multiple different trees that you can put in it. Mm-hmm. And I, I know a couple of the trees, it'll be multiple parts. Yeah. Yeah. That you can build up. And of course you can magnetize those easily. Oh yeah. Rock. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, we'll take some pictures of this. And then what else has we got in here? Are these the yes. are these they? These are they. So these are the uh, the STLs that I think Rick just mentioned. Yes, they are uh, for, <laughs> for the uh, the uh, Kings of War RPG. We have uh, a number of, of characters here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, I think that's right. Yeah, six six characters. Ooh, the salamander with the, the salamander the pirate. pirate. Yep. <laughs> And then it looked like we had a, a dwarf with a, with a hammer. Yeah, so the... I think I remember her. She was yep. like a, a geomancer. Geomancer, yeah. Very cool. We got, I think another is a halfling. I think that's the halfling. With a, with a little Spellcaster, staff. yeah. And then we got our, our human. A human the, the, paladin uh, The Basilean yeah. uh, character. And then we got... Uh, another little caster, it looks like. 
Yeah. It almost looks like he's got a fish in it. <laughs> <laughs> but a staff in the other. Yep. I'm, I'm trying to remember because I, I, I ran the RPG yep. a couple times and trying to remember yeah, the Yeah, I'm art. trying to remember what that one was. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, we got one of the, the archers here. Yep. A, a nice little elf archer, I believe. Very cool. And then a little, a pupper. A lynx. A lynx. It's, it's a lynx. Cat. That's right. Because yep. uh, it, was it the geomancer had a familiar? Yeah, I think it was I think her. So. Oh, very but cool. But yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. It was one of those, uh, oh, hey, I can print these. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, I should, I should put them out so we can get a picture of them. So it's funny. So you can tell that these weren't. Specifically made for home printing. Yeah. Um, there's a little loss in detail. But with a little tweaking, if Mantic were to put out, oh, I don't know, say a Patreon or some kind of STL thing on their website, and this was the quality of their minis with a little bit of tweaking for the detail, I'd be on that in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. Because these models actually look really cool. They really do. And so soon you will see how cool they look too <laughs> through the magic of the internet. And uh, so Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thank you. Merry Christmas. Rick's gift uh, that I gave to him is not miniature related, but I'm going to leave it a surprise because he didn't want to bring it inside to open it up. Well, you know, it's a thing. <laughs> well, because he had it all nice and wrapped and... A little bow on it and everything. I mean, I mean this was nice and wrapped. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> sort of. So I'll I mean, have to post that later box. so we can get on with the show. Yes, but, uh, get on with the show. Yeah, so that is really cool. I'm I'm super stoked to, to get those on the board. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, some other stuff that has recently come out uh, from Mantic is, uh, you know, just as of, I think it was, Today, the uh, Dead Zone FAQ dropped. FAQ <laughs> dropped, yes. And uh, I had a chance to, to go through it real quick. Yep, so did I. <laughs> and, uh, and so there was, there is, it's mostly kind of cl- the, the typical clarifications on rules. Uh, there were a couple that, that were spotted really early on uh, that, that you know, got corrected on all the, the web apps and stuff, yeah. like the companion app, uh, as far as, like, I think it was, like, the uh, Forge Father Artificer leader uh, yep. was missing his recon stat. You know, those those little, little things, things that sneak like that. past. Um, a couple new units. A couple new units, yeah. We have uh, three three new Marauder. Yeah. Well, two new Marauder units. Two and one, new and one, one updated one. Updated. Yep, so yeah. we, we have the... Um, and Ripper re- Warlord. Ripper Warlord. I'm realizing that my, my notes didn't update <laughs> on my tablet, so... Oh, it's a switch to... So it's really simple. It's the Ripper Warlord. Mm-hmm. Um, so they updated his splat um, and put his whole unit in there. Yeah. Because um, he's from the... Uh, fi- he, he's from Firefight. Firefight Starter. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's, he's, he's part of that. He's the resin uh, mini yep. for the uh, Marauders uh, faction starter. Yes. And then you have the new weapons teams. The yep, Goblin the Weapons Goblin teams. The Goblin Weapons teams. Yeah. Yep, yep. Um. I was re- I was really disappointed to see that their Hugh Beamer is only a AP one. Sad day. That kind of bothered me, but <laughs> it is what it is. I love my goblins. Yeah, it's a miniaturized one. Sure. It's on a bike. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, so the other one was that the the uh, the skyscrapers. Yes. Uh, got got a bit of an overhaul. And... Overhaul, different size base as well. Yep. Um. Kind of updated more with the the kits that they yeah. they now have yep. uh, for for firefight and whatnot. So uh, yeah, it, it's they they have a, a laundry list of, of equipment that they can take. <laughs> yes, they do uh, between between shotguns and, and pistols, and pistols, and Harunka blades, and HMGs. Yep. Yeah, so so they're they're kitted out to be pretty nasty. Yeah. Uh, not too pricey point wise. No, like, they're really not. The basic one was like fourteen points. Yeah. I forget. Are they specialists? Yes. They are. Okay. Yeah, they're specialists. Didn't know if they, they got the troop treatment. but um, It would be broken if they got the troop we, treatment. It would be pretty <laughs> it would broken. It completely yeah. broken. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just, just uh, I don't have the actual uh, verbiage in front of me, but the, the Ripper Warlord splat 
Yep. Uh, is, is none shall pass, <laughs> uh, which, which in a nutshell, like the idea is like you, you put that, uh, basically on, on your active mini and you say, okay, this person is now, uh, taking this stance, if you will, this, you shall not pass stat stance. And so during your opponent's turn, if someone moves into a cube, uh, adjacent to this mini, they can make a one move, your warlord or you know, whoever can make a one move step into that cube and start a free assault. <laughs> um, it does have uh, more verbiage for like breakaway yeah. situations. And it's stuff actually like got that. a lot of verbiage. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's one of those kind of like um, the GCPS had the, the Overwatch one. Oh, yeah. Which was like... In this very specific situation, when like this some, is when you can use someone it. is charging into yes. your cube, you can take a shot if you have this weapon type. And it was yeah. like it's all of that language needs to be there, but it is kind of verbose at the yeah. end of the day. It's a big one. Um, but but it's like again in a nutshell, it's a uh, your guy's standing there, and if anyone comes near him, he can lash out, um, which is kind of neat, and. Um, I think the other, the other one that I had on on my list. So so another another rule that uh, they kind of added in there, which I thought was kind of a, a neat a neat one, is that they they did add voluntary falling into the. Yeah, so that's an interesting thing because mm-hmm. if you're you're at height two, you still can't move out in the open. Like, it, I believe it said something about like, well, you still if have you, to. If you move into, if you end your movement where there's no floor, you fall. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's kind of a whole falling section. And uh, let me see. I might actually have it up here. So falling. Uh, if as part of any movement, a model chooses to end a move in a cube on the same or lower level with no floor or moves to a cube on a lower level without climbing down vertical scenery... The model will fall vertically until it re- enters a cube with a floor. Uh, I like this part. Note, the scatter rule applies if it is a partial floor. <laughs> so you can bounce <laughs> off on the way down. Um, you know, once the model is finished falling, scattering, resolve falling damage is normal. Uh, fall height is measured from the last floor the model was standing on. Uh, the movement which caused the fall may not continue after the fall, so you can't be sprinting, fall, and then can pick up continue, where you left off. Yeah. Uh, which makes sense, and um, and you you cannot move to a cube higher with no floor and then fall. Yeah. So um, so but essentially, like that was something that I, I think a couple people have kind of wanted. Every now and then, there'll be that situation where it's like, man, if I could just drop from this this you know sniper's nest and sit yeah. on sit on an objective or something like that. Um, well, it's one of those things to like. I personally am not sure how I feel about this one. Yeah. Uh, because you have teams like, I don't know, the Enforcers. Mm-hmm. Who have the jetpack. Jetpacks. They don't take fall damage. So they can just be bouncing So they can down. bounce anywhere they want. Yeah. Essentially. A- so you put that sniper up at height three, height four, it's not going to matter. That's a very fair point. So he takes a move action and he drops. Mm-hmm. Well, now that they've changed the sniper rifle... That's he true. takes a move action and drops down to the third level and gets clear line of sight. He doesn't have he can't use a sniper scope, but he can still take that shot. Let's see, did it because it, it specifically it, said it ends the movement. It ends the movement. Interesting. If I pin the model, that fell may then perform other actions as normal. Exactly. So, that's so a good point. like that's that's going to be one of those gamed rules. Hmm. I, I can see a lot of potential where players are going to game that. Yeah. Because they can. Uh, especially when you have anything that has a jetpack. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but we'll see how it plays out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as an enforcer player, I'm not going to argue. <laughs> You're like, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, that's a very fair point. And, um, but at, at the same time, you know, yeah, like you said, it, it'll be a bit of the gaming of the rules. But at the same time... It is kind of the taking advantage of, yep, uh, you know, kind of knowing the game really well. Well, yeah, because, I mean, I bring up the whole sniper thing because when I read that, the first thing that popped in my mind is, wait, I'm a sniper. Okay. 
Yeah. I'm going to take a shot up here. Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to use a shoot action. I mean, uh, splat. Yeah. A command dice. <laughs> I know the words. Yeah. I'm going to use a command dice and take that shot. And then I'm going to use my move action to drop down and take a regular shot. Yeah. I. That's pretty nasty. <laughs> it could be a really nasty combo. But but we'll have to see how that how that all plays out, I think. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, now people have ideas on how to, <laughs> <laughs> how to game it. Here you go. But, but I will say my favorite... FAQ adjustment uh, note that was included in there uh, was specifically talking about um, medics. And it was it was yep. specifically talking about like how keywords, uh, some keywords are assigned to uh, equipment and some are assigned to the unit profile and stuff like that. And there there was you know just kind of some clarifications on on how that's all kind of sorted out for things that are are kind of more you know constant like like energy shields and medic and stuff like that. Yeah. And my favorite line was that. Uh, that, uh, you know, the, the enforcer medic, uh, it turns out, does n in fact not use their pistol when providing first aid. <laughs> I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I always thought that's what their guns were for. <laughs> yeah, it's to shoot the dude. <laughs> Some red versus blue stuff going on there. Uh, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Hey there, I'm Brian. And I'm Rick. This is Blaine. You are listening to Dead Zone, the podcast. Keep listening for more excellent material from these two amazing men. Blaine, out. But yeah, so, uh, you know, nothing nothing otherwise uh, terribly game-breaking. Like, there, there wasn't a huge... Uh, Thing no, it was mostly clarifications. Yeah. Um, a big thing along the clarifications is things like the um, the shield gener generator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's there's a new sh uh, grenade that's a yeah, shield. It's, and I think that's because of the, sh um, what's his name? Ogan had Ogan, one. Ogan, yeah. Yeah. Like, there's no thing in his thing that allows him to throw it. That makes sense. This allows him now to throw it. Gotcha. But yeah. And, and plus, like, that does kind of open up. Uh, a new, uh, you know, item for for uh, equipments and stuff like that. Yeah. Loadouts. It'd be really neat to see that as an item on the board you can pick up, where it's just like, hey, you can you can throw down a, a shield uh, in this cube, and everyone in it gets gets the benefit of it. That's pretty neat. Um, but yeah, so so definitely check it out. Uh, get caught up on it because it is now in play, and yes, it is. Tournaments going forward. Uh, are going to include that. So, speaking of tournaments. Yes. You had one. I did. I unfortunately did not make it. No, that, that's... Because I was in a football stadium. <laughs> <laughs> what, to be fair, <clears throat> watching the Lions win. I, yeah. Which was which is a fun I, change of pace for those of you not in Michigan. <laughs> well, okay, to be fair, Rachel and I didn't watch the football game. No? No, we watched people. <laughs> we had a blast. Like, Rachel and I were cracking up the entire time. Um, to the point where when we got home that night, mm -hmm. like, because we went out to eat and everything, so we didn't get home until late. Yeah. But I flipped on the NFL channel. I'm like, oh, hey, highlights from the Lions game. I don't remember that. <laughs> when did that happen? So, yeah, we didn't watch the game. But, yes, we had a blast. Yeah. I got I got a little bit of, of flack for uh, for not watching the game. Uh, I'm sure you did. Yeah, uh, my wife was with her her family watching uh -huh. while we were uh, running a tournament. So, uh, but yeah, so we had the the Frozen Earth Dead Zone tournament. Uh, Such a cool theme. Yeah, it was especially in Michigan. So so <laughs> what we what we ultimately wound up doing like the the whole uh, impetus of the the uh, you know kind of narrative and and the event as it were was that, you know, this was a planet that got kind of knocked off its axis ever so slightly. And so that meant it was out of range of the star that, you know, gave, yeah. it, gave it heat. Yep. And, uh, but that it was, it was you know, a, a thriving, uh, you know, planet before then in the, like, the third sphere. 
And so uh, what's left is that it, you know all these you know giant buildings and everything everything is just covered in snow and ice. <laughs> I didn't I didn't I didn't uh, douse the boards in like fake snow or anything like that. <laughs> that would have been funny. Been kind of neat. <laughs> but instead I I did a whole bunch of I found STLs for like these uh, icicles and glaciers yeah. which I had found because I had a different project <laughs> with, with my Northern Alliance. Yep. Um, but I printed off of those and, and sprayed them up real quick with some teal and some white. They looked great. And, um, uh, yeah, they were, they were a huge hit actually. And they, they worked great for scatter. Yeah. Uh, and I actually, as a little bit of a Christmas gift, I do have a bunch here for you Ooh, because my printer's still down. Yeah. Your, your <laughs> printer's still down and I have like a lot of these things. Awesome. I was kind of giving them away <laughs> when we were wrapping up. Uh, yeah, I got a chance to play uh, Nick uh, in some firefight, and he brought them. Yeah, he, was he, like, brought them. he brought them and showed me. And I was like, "Oh, those are sweet." Yeah. So, so there's some here for you. Yay! We don't need to do the ASMR bit again. Okay, we don't need because uh, it'll take me a second to get it out. <laughs> and you said you didn't bring any miniature things for me. Ha ha ha! <laughs> um, and so, but so with that, we had um, we had five players come in, and I, I took up the sixth spot as a ringer. And, and we actually had um, another one of our, our guys who mostly does Kings of War stop by to check out. And um, But, no, it was, it was a really great time uh, for the guys that showed up. And uh, we, had, we, we didn't have any repeat lists of that group, which was really fun. And uh, so we had in um, first place, we had uh, Mike with his Marauders, uh, Took a, a really fascinating uh, Marauders list in that it was kind of a a swarm uh, style, like it was a lot of commandos, huh. a handful of maw beasts, one Ripper Rainmaker, um, and and he like he took and held objectives <laughs> like that, and he he like dominated each match that he was in. That's what I heard. Yeah. And he and uh, and he actually beat Corey. Yep. Um, they, they actually play together. He, yeah, they play often. They're, they're kind of uh, of the same group there. And he beat Corey for the top spot. And he uh, beat Nick earlier. And he beat Nick earlier, which was funny. So right after Nick's game with him, mm-hmm. he texted me and said, "Okay, I need to learn how to play against Marauders." <laughs> <laughs> and he he beat me as well. Well, I mean, that's, you're the that's not uh, <laughs> anything special. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> I, I was rocking Maison Labs. Oh. Uh, so, so, so you, that's why you lost, because you didn't have a Strider to put up on top. I did brain. <laughs> uh, I did brain an aberration. It, it's kind of a monster mash. Uh, monster type, mash. Type list. Nice. Um, but uh, in second place, we had Eric, uh, who was playing Forge Fathers. Uh, Go Forge Fathers. Nick. Uh, took third place with his yep. Asterians. Uh Corey took fourth uh, with his That's play. That's so weird. And it, it, it's because we only did three. You only three did three rounds. rounds. There was only six uh, of you guys. So yeah, it, it was. We were going to start overlapping on on yep. gaming. So I we just kind of we kind of all agreed we had a great time. Yeah. And it was starting to get later, so it was like, okay, we'll we'll call it there, and and we'll we all have fun. Um, after Corey, we had Jason, uh, Jason Black, who was playing Veerman. Uh, and this is like Jason's fourth or fifth game. Fourth, uh, fifth, and sixth. Yeah, because <laughs> he was in. He did play in uh, the Magnetar finale tournament oh, okay. that I ran. Okay. Uh, and I think he played like twice before that. So we're talking that was his first five. So this was his next. You know, up to eight now. There ain't nothing least. wrong with that. And he did really well. Nice. Uh, he he actually he played Corey I think first. And and they went to time. Oh wow! Um, and uh, yeah, so it was it was pretty good. And uh, and then I had my maze on labs in last <laughs> place. Uh, Jason actually took home best painted and best sportsman. In the right eye. Um, so so I had a whole bunch of three D printed uh, goodies. Yep. Uh, for for folks, uh, and it was kind of just a all right. You grab you get two for, for each place. <laughs> yeah. Is kind of how we did it. Uh, it was really successful at the Michigan GT. Yep. So I kind of sure brought was. it back here, and um, and and kind of with that, uh, for the best sportsman because this was technically a Dead Zone the podcast sponsored. Yeah, it was uh, tournament. 
uh, for for Jason, we actually got him one of the Dead Zone one of our Dead Zone shirts. T-shirts. It is on its way to him soon. Soon, <laughs> I think. I think the season is print on demand. It takes uh, yeah. a little bit of a backseat, but uh, that that'll be going out to him soon. Uh, and yeah, everyone had a really great time, Good. and it sounds like almost all of them are on board for firefights. Love it. So in February. So yeah, speaking of that. Yeah. So February eighteenth. Yes. Is that what we're going with? I think so. The the weekend following Valentine's. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Valentine's isn't one of those holidays that Val and I celebrate. Yeah. Because it's one of those I don't need a day to do that when we do it all year long. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so February 18th, mm-hmm. we're going to do 1,000 points. Yes. Um, and it's been confirmed with wives. So yes. I'll actually be there. <laughs> uh, and we're doing 1,000 points? Yes. Yeah, so this is this is kind of in prep for uh, Adepticon. Adepticon for you guys, which, yeah. Which is just going to be the month after that. Yeah, it's it's actually it's perfect timing though, mm-hmm. um, because and, you can you'll get the kinks out. Yeah. Uh, of whatever list you're going to take to Adepticon. Yeah. Not I me, know. But <laughs> well, like I know Nick's going to Adepticon. Yep. Um, specifically for Dead Zone and Firefight. Sweet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and we'll see if any of those other guys end up going for Firefight. Absolutely. Which I hope they do. Yeah. Because uh, it's an amazing game. Mm-hmm. Um, like, it's funny. So after your tournament, I ended up getting a chance to play Firefight. Yeah, you did. And Dead Zone. <laughs> I was a little jealous. Uh, yeah. So I took Enforcers up against uh, Astaire Hands. Yeah. Um, Elite is tough. And you really know when you make a mistake. Um, like, I lost my sniper team right off the bat. <laughs> but to be fair, they did their job. Yeah. But then they were gone. Yep. So they couldn't do their job anymore. Um, <laughs> and then I got to play. So <laughs> I took it to heart what you said. Um, you sent me about me being called out <laughs> on Marauders. So Nick wanted to play yeah. Marauders. And I'm like, all right. And he told me. This is his mistake. He told me he wasn't going to bring Spectras. <laughs> a bad move. So I pretty much made a goblin list. Four marauders, a couple grunt bots, yep. a stump bot, and the grunt bot leader. Oh, nice. Bolt. <laughs> bolt. Actually, it's not It's not even bolts anymore. Oh, no. I still call them bolts. But, yeah. Um, yeah. And he was not expecting that much <laughs> melee hurt because yeah. they can put it out. Um, so I don't think that really helped him when it comes to learning to play against Marauders. <laughs> yeah, so so that was the thing is that Mike uh, Mike was wondering at the end and is like, hey, you know, I won this tournament. It's like, am I the best Marauder player <laughs> in the United States? I'm like, well, yeah, I, I'm gonna say yes until you fight Rick because he's a crazy <laughs> but Marauder. I'm not, player. but I don't play in a lot. I don't play, play Dead Zone tournaments. But uh, so maybe you'll have to. Maybe Change that. We'll have to see. And we'll see. I've been running a lot of them, so I know. Might get a chance. <laughs> if we can get the schedule to work. Yeah, that's always the kicker. Um, but speaking of Adepticon, yes, uh, which again is at the end of March. Yep. Uh, which will be coming up fast, uh, even as faster this, than people realize. This episode it. drops, um, and so uh, we did get the schedule kind of figured out. So it's going to be Armada uh, is Friday. Yep. And then uh, Friday or Friday morning, I should, okay. I should say. So it's gonna be in the morning. Yeah, I believe it's nine to four, nine to three, nine to four. Yeah, it would have to be nine to four. And um, I mean, just just by on how many players I had last year. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna need to go. Well, I think we did, we did uh, we did three rounds for it, and so I, I think I actually did have it as a six hour block, so nine to three. Okay. And then four to uh, another. It might be ten. <laughs> another six hour <laughs> block. For three round of firefight. Firefight, okay. Uh, at a thousand points. At a thousand points. Yep. And um, and then Saturday uh, is going to be dead zone in the morning. Um, I believe that one. It might have been that Armada started earlier, but <laughs> <laughs> I've got it in my calendar, and we'll we'll have Priorities. The correct times. Yes. Um, as we get closer, because I mean this this actually just came out from a yeah, it did. just a couple of days ago. And it's not even available for purchasing tickets yet. It's nope. the preview time. Uh, so you can kind of start planning out your, your day. Planning out your whole weekend. 
And, uh, and so Saturday in kind of the morning, early afternoon is going to be uh, Dead Zone. Okay. Uh, it's up against Kings of War. So, well, so sure. Kings of War has got pretty much a whole day Saturday and then half day Sunday kind of thing going on. Don't they have something on Friday too? Friday. They, they have um, a team tournament or something like that? Yes, they are doing a team tournament. I forget when that is. It's either Friday or Thursday. Yeah, it would be Thursday or Friday because yeah. they can't play a team Kings of War tournament during <laughs> the two day Kings no, of War tournament. That, it just doesn't work. That would be a little tricky. And I, it, I, I know it's frustrating for some players mm-hmm. um, because they want to play all the games, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, the fact is, at this point, Mantic has enough games going on in the GT, and then this is not including any side games that they used to do that are fun. Yeah. But there's just not enough time. Yeah. Because if you really think about it, like, Thursday's not super busy. Mm-hmm. So if you take... But most people aren't there yet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So if you take Kings of War or Dead Zone or Armada or Firefight and put that on Thursday, you're not going to have the attendance that... That those games need. Well, that they deserve. Yeah, yeah. Really. So so then that boils it down to Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mm-hmm. Sunday is locked with Kings of War. Yeah. And it's the last day of Adepticon. So really you have Friday, Saturday. Yeah. You can't put all of those games on Friday and Saturday and not have crossover. Yeah. And yeah. the thing is, with when it comes to the crossover part of it, with games like Dead Zone and Firefight versus Kings of War, Firefight is new. Mm-hmm. Dead Zone's been at Adepticon how many years now? <laughs> Quite a few. Quite a few. Um, Armada's still new. Armada's new. So those guys need that Friday time. Yeah. They do. That because prime spot. The prime spot for those games that allows... Mm-hmm. The bulk of those Kings of War players like Tyler Schultz. Mm-hmm. If he wants to play either Armada or Firefight, he can. He plays Dead Zone. He's incredibly <laughs> good at Dead Zone. Yeah. Um, but the opportunity for people like him to actually jump into Firefight because it's an amazing game. And he's done some great videos on it. Yeah. So I'm sure it, he's happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But there, but there's that. There's got to be give and take. Yeah. It's not that Mantic is saying... Oh, we don't like you. You can't play because yeah, we're going to yeah. put these two games that you love. Like it's not that at all. No, it, it it was a tough decision. Like we we were we've been talking about it since before like the Michigan GT. Yep. Uh, we've been trying to figure out like what is the best fit. What 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 aligns with you know what games need yep. that that prime spot to really kind of get that mass number of, of players to really kind of showcase how how good those games are yes. and and speak you know semantic is like hey. The, you have a lot of players here to play this game yeah. uh, that you, you released. And so I'm really sad I'm gonna miss it this year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you you will be missed. Um and, and unfortunately, like in that same kind of breath, like Dreadball unfortunately doesn't have an official event. Yep. Um but that said, a bunch of us are you know, that are gonna be at the planning event. Planning to play it. We're planning to play uh probably Saturday evening, uh after Dead Zone's all wrapped yep. up and probably after I <laughs> get food or something. I might I might still have some chores to do. Um but uh you know after that uh, a bunch of us are probably going to get up get together in that uh same area cuz we play usually some ultimate. Play some ultimate. Play maybe even play a quick little league in a night or something like That'd that. That'd be cool. Um you know we'll kind of unofficial see. official league of the night. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. And then um there is as I think I think there's one side game uh, well, there there is the big game uh, yeah. for Kings of War, and then there was also uh, Dead Zone Doom Ball. Oh, uh, right on. Is is going to be there? Uh, so that one that one's uh, I think they're only looking for two players per yep. per game on that one. Uh, it's for those that are unfamiliar. It's it's kind of a fun little game. With it's a runners. fun little soccer game. Yeah, it's, I mean, really, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it's um uh, it's like Rocket League. Yeah, with, with uh, but with Veerman Tunnel, tunnel Runners. <laughs> So, um, so the no Hellboy this year? Uh, it doesn't look like it. Aw. Um, I, uh, I don't... You had a lot of fun with that last year. <laughs> I actually did. I had a lot of fun running that one. Uh, and I know we, we had a lot of fun doing uh, Overdrive. Uh, yep. Uh, those, those couple times last year as well. Um, I, I think it might just be uh, the number of people we have available yeah. to run the, the events. It was kind of a, a deciding factor in that. Which makes sense. Yeah. And um, but no, it was. Uh, it's. I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a little exhausting, uh, <laughs> as it always is. But yeah, I'm running at least three of these things. Probably. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> but 
But uh, no, we're we're all gonna have a really good time, and uh, I I can't wait to see you know firefight at Adepticon. Yes, I'm 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 still trying to convince my wife that wherever we go for this family vacation, it makes us go through Chicago. <laughs> I'm like, can't we go a roundabout way to go yeah. there, and we can go through Chicago so I can at least drop in and say hi. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see how well that goes. Yes. <laughs> You've seen me, you love me, you know you want me. Here you're listening to Dead Zone the Podcast with Rick and Brian. Don't turn that dial or I'm coming for you. But uh but yeah, so that's that's like a lot of tournament stuff coming up. Yes. Um and then I actually just because I, I feel like being busy, I guess. Uh, I, did, <laughs> I am gonna start getting um uh some Demos going at one of the local stores yes, near me at, at R- the big one at RIW Hobbies. Uh, they kind of finally got the the stars to align and, and talk to them about running us and know us. We're going to start with Dead Zone uh, in January, and I believe it was the <laughs> second week of Jan yes. second weekend of January. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that's even like the fourteenth. Or something like that. <laughs> something like that. I don't. I don't want to be looking at my calendar while I'm on on the show, because I'm. I'm Valid. I'm a professional. Um, so I'll look at the calendar. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah January fourteenth. Nice job. It's and, the second Saturday of January. And so uh, definitely looking forward to getting more demos going there. <laughs> they have uh, Mantic product. They have Armada. They have Firefight. They have Dead Zone, uh, and yep. and a collection of them. And so. Uh, and then uh, kind of on top of that, we're also uh, some of the, the local uh, player group there. We are going to try to start doing more of a regular game night. Uh, probably probably Thursdays for us because that's actually when RIW has yeah. kind of open play for war games. That's good. And, um, you know, hopefully they don't have a lot of tables <laughs> Yeah. As, as far for war gaming. Yeah. But... You know, for, I mean, they got a decent section in back there that yeah. you could easily get. I mean, you. I mean, when it comes to dead zone, you can get at least two on each of those tables. That, so. that, that's the thing I, I need to like negotiate with them is they they want to keep <laughs> they want to keep pushing us to I, the last time we we played yeah. there. They're like, no, you have to go on the the war gaming tables. I'm like, we could fit on these other tables. That's some fits on any uh, table. And uh, but no, so so I think there's there's gonna be a good uh, relationship with that store. Good. I know the other uh, store near me, which is Pandemonium Games. Uh, I think they're you know still still working out when they're going to be opening yeah. for indoor play, um, but I know that's that's in the books for them. Like they they are planning for that uh, situation in the in the future. Uh, I think this it's just kind of some administrative stuff on their on the back end for them before they want to pull the trigger on it. Right. On. So looking forward to uh, kind of getting these these games going. Yeah. A bit more. I'm sure my wife will be happy with that. <laughs> but. I yep. think I remember having all these conversations with Val. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. You're going to what? Uh, I'm going to go to Adepticon. You're going to what? <laughs> I, I do sometimes have to do the little reminder. It's like, remember when I talked to you about <laughs> I. So I reminded Val last week that I was going to be recording today. Yeah. She's like, yeah, I know. You got your podcast. So I'm like, no, I'm going to be recording all day because I have deads on the podcast. And then I'm doing the GT part. And she's like, what? Oh, no. <laughs> and then I, I brought it up yesterday, and she's like, um, what? I'm like, yeah, I told you. I love you. <laughs> Again, I, Valentine's Day yeah. is right before the fireplace time. Maybe, yeah. maybe, uh, maybe just do a little extra. Maybe it'll year. be like a, I'll make dinner on Friday night there before that go. tournament. There you go. Um, we encourage, uh, you know, those those supportive spouses out there. <laughs> yes. Be supportive in kind. Oh, my God. I wonder if Val's going to make you cookies. Oh, wow. That'd be a lot of cookies. No, for a death gun. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's Because be, I'm not going. You're, you're not going. But that doesn't mean that you couldn't drive. 
huh. past your house. <laughs> Drive past my house on your way out and, hmm. We'll have to coordinate that. Or maybe I can convince her to make cookies. I'm like, but we have to deliver them because Brian has to go a different route. So what? what oh, there you go. Oh, boy. <laughs> Brian has to take a different route to get to a death cut, so we need to take the cookies to him. Yeah, you need to, you need to swing by Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> because, like... Those cookies are kind of a tradition at this point. They are. Uh, <laughs> the, the people at the booth now plan their meals around <laughs> what cookies they're going to do. Uh, maybe. Maybe. So We'll have to let them know <laughs> if, if it doesn't happen. <laughs> if it doesn't so happen. Guys, you have to bring your own food. <laughs> you have to bring your own snacks. Yeah. The cookies aren't there the this cookies year. cookies won't be there. So this is the last episode of 2022. Wow. Yeah. What a year. <laughs> yeah. So what what are you looking forward to the most in 2023? That's, <laughs> it's it's hard because like it really is just getting out and gaming a lot yeah. more. Like I like that's the big thing. Yeah. I, and I got really fortunate in that I have now two players. That you have like a, within five minutes of me. You have a cult. <laughs> You have a cult now. They just happened to find us, which is, which is great. <laughs> I know you just had a, a Dreadball player. Yeah, in. completely random. Hey, when does somebody want to go play Dreadball? And I'm like, you're in Lansing. And I was like, darn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the one time we have a player. Yeah. It's like, that's Brian's favorite game. <laughs> <laughs> Too far away now. Um, but, yeah, yeah, we've been very fortunate in that our, our community has continued to yes. grow. And... Um, you know, in, in great ways. We're, we're finding some really uh, fantastic new players yep. um, that are, are, you know, that, that kind of positive bunch you want to have as your yes. gaming group. <clears throat> and um, I, th- I really do think just kind of looking forward to doing a whole lot more gaming. I know we've talked about doing some more kind of weekends where I come down to yeah. to the studio. Come down here to the studio so we can get some games in we'll get some and games record ourselves. them. <laughs> yeah, because at... One point, like we used to play constantly. We used to play a lot. Um, and then you moved. And then I moved, and then I got. And then you got married. <laughs> um, and then you created a cult. Um, and I'm getting left out. No. No, it's not true. No, oh, okay. I've got players. So my cult is the rebellion, and you're welcome to join the rebellion. <sighs> I am not joining the rebellion <laughs> because we created the rebellion. <laughs> so so yeah that that's I guess that means I, I have to bring marauders, don't I? Probably. That's what I, but that's what I brought to the GT. Yeah. But it shouldn't stop you. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, still, I, I still got a little bit of time to decide on that. So, so, Rick, what are you looking forward to in 2023, the distant future? I'm looking to play more tournaments, actually. Yeah. Like, in, in it's really true. Like, so. I have been enjoying running them, actually, quite a bit. It's fun, right? It, yeah. Um, I'll still fret. Way too much about like how to divvy up price and party stuff. <laughs> yes, but but no, like running the events is really fun. So, um, it, and I want to play in events. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's kind of that funny mix of my kids' sports, mm-hmm. um, and getting random games in. It's like in the GT and in these kind of things. Like, I actually want to play. Like I always yeah. always enjoyed playing. Uh-huh. But I've not been a tournament player. I'm yeah. I'm not. I'd rather just play the games for fun. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't know. There's some kind of bug going on that it's like <laughs> you want to play in a tournament, Rick. You want to play in a tournament. I'm like, you yeah, wanna, I kinda you wanna do. crush them. <laughs> I kinda wanna play in a tournament. So I'm drive your that's what I'm hoping to do is get in more tournaments. Obviously, this starts with the firefight tournament in February. Yeah. Um that's a great way to start the new year. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping in the summer to get some more firefight in. <laughs> But to actually get into a dead zone tournament, mm-hmm. to bring my Marauders and see how well I can actually do in a tournament setting with Marauders, that'd be really. That's cool. what I'm looking forward to. Yeah, we'll have to come up with a theme for that uh, <laughs> that tournament. <laughs> it's around Valentine's Day, so maybe maybe something <laughs> romantic <laughs> or broken hearted or broken hearted. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, that adds a little bit more of a. <laughs> darker turn to that. So, so we're all here because we all came to this tournament because because the Rebs broke our hearts. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll 
we'll see what uh, what we kind of put together on, on yeah. that front. I think it'll be a fun time. Yes, definitely. And uh, and yeah, so uh, p- apart from that, so other other projects yep. uh, that we got kind of going on. I know I know you've been doing a whole lot of gift stuff. Uh, how are how are the uh, the Sally Forcers going? <laughs> they kind of took a step back. Gotcha. Um, mostly they took a step back because of ambush. Yeah. Um, and Nick and some of the local Lansing area guys have been talking about really getting back into Kings of War. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I've got this box of salamanders that I was going to rip through. I can switch gears. Yeah. I can switch gears and do, because really all I have for Kings of War is my undead. Gotcha. Um, and I've played undead for what? Three years. (laughs) Like that's the only army I've played much like you with your ribs. Or or Just my saying. elves. Or your elves, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I finished the elves, and I never. <laughs> I've, I'll, I've only just recently picked up a new project, which was the Northern Alliance. Northern Alliance, yeah. Which I worked on for an entire year, and barely have a, <laughs> an ambush. Well, so. and that's and that was kind of like looking at that ambush, and I'm like, you know what? It's a really good starter. Yeah, I, and I really like the way they packaged it mm-hmm. as well. So they released all of the ambush starter sets, the pre-orders, yeah. um, which are pretty sweet. Mm-hmm. But conveniently, I have enough salamanders; I don't <laughs> have to go that route. Um, and really, the only other projects I've been working on mostly is the D and D club. Yeah, which is really. I've cool. been having a blast with those kids um, to the point where they actually convinced me to DM for them. Ooh, boy, um, I forgot how tedious it was to dm 12 <laughs> players Ooh, yeah that's and right. have the party break up into three groups oh dear not two three <laughs> let's split up the team yeah um so that was fun and then of course uh just got them into painting mm-hmm. uh thanks to thunderforge studios they uh yeah. gave us some paints and minis um and i've actually been showing a couple of them dead zone um, some videos and some pictures, and they want me to bring Dead Zone in, and I'm like, yes, yes. <laughs> that's really why I joined this club. <laughs> well, no, that's not, but yes, but yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it totally was. Well, uh, that, that's great because that, that was something we talked about, uh, like with the the Michigan GT podcast, yep. uh, and stuff was was kind of those those grassroots, yeah, uh, type type involvement in in schools and whatnot, getting. Getting younger generations into into the these types, games, yeah, into these games is a well great... into the whole world, yeah. Um, because I mean, you look at it like, like everybody always talks about their first minis are either D and D or Games Workshop, right? Mm-hmm. That's pretty much yeah. These kids' first minis are Mantic. <laughs> like, yeah, we have the uh, Whiz Kids pre pre prime, yeah, that yeah. they're working but, that we got from Thunderforge, but because Mantic sent us a whole bunch of models. The first models they're putting together are Mantic models. That's so they're cool. starting with Mantic, <laughs> um, which is super s- exciting for me. Yeah. Um, because there might be something coming in January for them. from Cripple Fox Gaming, and you are listening to the lovely and talented Rick and Brian on Dead Zone, the podcast. Um, what about you? <laughs> <laughs> Hobby-wise. Um, well, uh, I've actually... <laughs> it, it's kind of that thing where like, I took a step back uh, thinking about Firefight, and, and yep. I've, been, I've been working on my, my story for the end of the month. Oh, I can't wait until you release that. And, and, You've been teasing me with it. I'm like, I, oh my god, I need I have been, I've only like kind of just got my groove on for yeah. it. Uh, so, like, stuff is finally starting to fall into place with the writing side of that. But a big part that I have was kind of playing with is, like, a- each time I, I, I work on uh, an episode, if you will, yeah. of, of this story that I've been telling, uh, like, I, I put a lot of thought, probably more than I need to, into all the different, like, organizations and factions and groups of people that are, are going to occupy this space. Yeah. With the, the thought of, like, 
we might run into them later, so I want to have <laughs> who they are figured well, out. Sure. And um, and so kind of with that, it was uh, kind of figuring figuring out like okay, paint schemes and and whatnot. <laughs> you know, how, how would I put together this this faction if I had them for say firefight uh, yeah. or dead zone? And and so. Uh, for those that aren't familiar, so I have a, kind of a custom style for my Rebs. <laughs> that was kind of my, my first uh, foray into into Dead Zone was the Rebs. I kind of picked a color scheme I liked and, and went, went with, with it. it. Uh, from there, I I did my GCPS uh, as my, my first Gundam list. Yep. Um, and then I did, uh, I have uh, Enforcers, which I did as Clone Troopers for Star Wars. <laughs> yep. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to be continuing that. Uh, and then I had Maison Labs, which was another Gundam list, yeah. uh, is the Titans. <laughs> and then I did my Marauders as another, another Gundam list as, oh. um, as Zeon. And, uh, and so like continuing with that theme, I was like, okay, I was originally thinking of doing Mandalorians for Forge Fathers. Uh, yeah, that would look pretty sweet. Um, and, and, and I kind of going back and forth, but like, the Mandalorian style is is very, uh, it, it can be unique, but th- with so yeah. much that's come out about Mandalorian, yes, uh, since I was kind of playing with that idea, <laughs> um, I, I've kind of been going back and forth on it. But one that kind of spoke to me was specifically kind of coming from the Brocker side of things is, is where I, I started with this. So a big thing with the mechs and and all kind of armored units of <laughs> of the Forge Fathers is that they have a face to them. Even their vehicles, because if you look at the Stern Hammer tank, like it's if you look big, at it from the front, that's totally a Forge Father face. It's got a big beardy face. <laughs> yep. And I was like, what other things do I enjoy where you have giant <laughs> mechs with faces on them? And I was like, you know what? These guys also dig a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know an iron ancestor if he had a giant drill on his arm instead yep. of a hammer Tengen Topa Gurin Lagan <laughs> I think is going to be a really fun That's bit. a fun paint scheme. Yes. Uh I I don't know. I'm not going to go into the weeds on what that show's sure. about. It's it's a crazy super robot wars that's all about manly spirit and <laughs> and things cranked up to eleven, and that rap is the soul of man and stuff all like right. that, um, and, and that you you succeed by just like slamming things together and you know with your your heart and and you know full beating energy is like that's what makes things that work. Sounds like a Ford father. Yeah. It really does. And so that's going to be, and and it was kind of funny because my Forge Fathers were my second mini list I actually painted, which was just kind of another yeah. scheme um, I had off the top of my head, but they were red and, yeah. and silver. And I'm like, oh, you know what? This this will work really well <laughs> furthering that theme. And so I've got this whole thing playing out in my head where uh, I've, I'm going to have a, a Brocker heavy uh, list actually for probably dead zone first and then we'll see in firefight that is uh simon and and his uh his guys all that said like that's just <laughs> window dressing in the story that i'm working on which is very yes. much focused on marauders pirates and grunt bots flying through space i love <laughs> and it, it, unfortunately the listeners don't get it I mean, by the time this comes out, you'll be by the time just about out. ready. Yeah. Um, but the description and how you made it make sense <laughs> in your writing that they put these things that allow them to fly in space on grunt bots. Yeah. Which I thought was awesome because, you know, I love goblins. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, like the, the grunt bot itself looks like a very fast mech compared, yes. compared to the very stompy like striders and stunt bots and stuff. Yeah. Like the the grunt bot looks lean, uh, uh, small and fast. Small and fast. And I thought, you know, what would make it faster? <laughs> Put a jetpack on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so so I, I'm I'm having fun writing that story. Like the cool. idea has has been uh, percolating and and finally coming to paper. Do you have any grunt bots? I have one. You need to get at least two more. I do need to get two more. That's always been on my list. Yes. 
Maybe with some of that prize support that I, I get for running, <laughs> running all these events, I'll get that. Yeah. And, and, a, and a Spectra, because I need a Spectra. Um, Sorry, Nick bought them all. <laughs> yes. um, but uh, so all that said about the story, I've actually been going back through and looking at Firefight yeah. for a thousand points. Yep. I've got that for enforcers or, or, or for um, for GCPS. GCPS, yeah. Um, solid. I think I was adding like two minis, you know, two like troopers. Yeah. Just to flesh out like, okay, here's one that's going to be my leader for my ranger, my yeah. second ranger squad. Yeah. And here's here's another one that's just to, in case I don't want to have a guy with the compact on it. <laughs> yep. Uh, for, for a regular trooper set. And, um, but otherwise I've, I'm really set on, on my GCPS for now. And I was like, okay, well, when I was first playtesting, I had Enforcers versus Forge Fathers. Mm -hmm. And I went back and started playing the list. I'm like, I can almost get these guys to 1,000 points. (laughs) Oh, wow. Uh, So I'm going to have 1,000 points GCPS, 1,000 points Enforcers, and 1,000 points Forge Fathers, all for Firefight. And I maybe have to paint... A dozen minis for that. Oh, wow. That's not bad at all. No. <laughs> One of which is a tank. <laughs> eh, that'll be quick. But I, I already magnetized that. I've been posting pictures yeah. about it. Yep, you did. Um, I got it all, all prepped and ready. Um, and I've got a nice big hardy magnet <laughs> inside <laughs> for uh, for the turret swapping. Yep. So the downside is that you can't do the APC Correct. one and, and the tank version just because, like, the it's APC a is a bigger... Yeah. Has a bigger badonka donk. <laughs> <laughs> it has a bigger backside. Yes, and um, but but no, man, that that tank looks sweet. I'm really. Oh, excited. I love the tank. I'm really excited to get it uh, painted up and need to, to figure out exactly uh, the color scheme on it because <laughs> because my forge fathers are gonna like I have imperial forge fathers that are separate from this rocker. <laughs> um, so that 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 factors into this whole narrative going through my head. Yeah. Uh, and so that's that's how I've been deciding like what projects to do because I've <laughs> I've still got Asterians that I'm trying to get together for Dead Zone. Yeah, and I don't I'm, have Asterians. So I might need I might need to just do like one more troop or something <laughs> for for my Kings of War ambush set. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, you guys are good for right now. I'm gonna go back to sci-fi and get all this stuff together. Yep. Um, granted, I don't know when I'm actually going to be playing Enforcers or, or well, Forge yeah. Fighters in Firefight, but it's nice to have those uh, forces handy for the for demos, demos. And, and whatnot, for ringer lists and everything, because yep. um, like I said, I'm, I'm probably going to be running a lot more of these events, So, and uh, and I think I think they're super eye-catching, yes. um, and, which is what I like to have in my demos. It's like, I want that thing... That makes them go, oh, wait, is that, so, is that a Gundam? <laughs> so when uh, Nick and I were over at Evo playing Firefight, yeah, one of the other guys came up, looked at the table, says, Rick, are you trying to get yourself in trouble? I was like, what do you mean? He says, that's 40K. And I'm like, no, look again. It's Firefight. He's like, Ooh, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. And then if that wasn't enough, I've continued the Star <laughs> Saga <laughs> adventures. Yes. You have. Um, I did another another two uh, missions worth uh, of it. So so this one, uh, the first one I did was the one that has the Chovar in yep. it. Uh, and so so the whole thing is that we 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 kind of get off on on a specific floor in this in this lab, <laughs> and uh, immediately we're being kind of bombarded with these psychic visions. Yeah. Um, and that have a specific like code. <laughs> written on them and and really what it is is like as these psychic kind of attacks are, are coming like they're actually introducing new powers to the nexus player um which is right on. which would be very nasty if i wasn't doing solo yeah <laughs> um but it still played out in a very tough fashion um but but basically like the the first thing you have to do is you have to discover where all these terminals are to unlock the main server room <laughs> <laughs> and to do so, you have to do them in a specific order. Oh, boy. That the psychic images are feeding to you. So it's randomized <laughs> what the order is going to be. 
I kid you not, I lucked out where it was in order, like where where we started. <laughs> it's like, here's terminal one. Boop. <laughs> okay. Here's terminal two. And I was I was flipping them over at, at specific times with the with cards coming up. And it it worked out where it put me right right at the end uh, to get the last one in, open the door. Uh, fighting the Chobar is pretty nasty. Um, yeah. And, uh, but we managed to... I haven't done that one yet. We managed to pull it off. Uh, in fact, I think the Santiago the Devil was the one that got the final uh, blast. In Killing there. blow. Um, but but it, it, hit, it hits hard and, and has like a lot of psychic <laughs> abilities that can make your world a little miserable nice um but that was that was a really good one and uh the next one after that is is it had kind of a, a bit of a filler uh, okay. feel to it where where you basically you're going past the checkpoint yeah um that uh the urbana blackwing guys have set up and so this is actually where if you had that demo pack from like the second mission or whatever yep this is the mission where it comes in play where, oh. where you can cut out half <laughs> of, of the map by using the demo pack and blowing, and blowing up. everything up. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, there's some other uh, little like tidbits of, of lore. You find out more about um, uh, the, the, what is it, like Dr. Coiner. Yeah. And that he has the vector and all this <laughs> other uh, fun stuff about... Um, you know, it's, it's it's a bit more setup of yeah. of what's kind of going down, and um, but no, it was it was another really fun one. Uh, played through that one a little a little quicker because well, when you can blow a hole in the wall, yeah, um, it makes it really easy. But in the grand scheme, I'm only halfway through the campaign. Yep. Uh, so there's, there's quite a lot a, to it. There's quite a bit left, um, and so I'm gonna see about you know continuing on. Yeah. Obviously, I've got a whole lot of projects on the plate, too. You do. You've got a lot. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how much I, I can keep this going. I, I might only do, like, once uh, more a month kind of yeah. thing, as opposed to I've been I've been able to, to double whammy a couple of the missions uh, while football's been on. But once, well, sure. once that wraps up, it's like, oh, okay, you know, time to, time to spend <laughs> now time Now you actually together. have to pay attention. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, so, yeah, so that's... I'm gonna I'm gonna keep doing that. I think it's it's a really fun time to go through that that story. Right on. And um and yeah. Yeah, I might pull mine out this weekend. Oh, nice. Since we're going up north, yeah, in yeah. theory, depending on the weather. Yeah. Um, yeah. But if we're going up north, then I'm just gonna be chilling because there's no internet, no nothing. Um, don't really feel like packing up all the paints. Yeah. But a couple of years ago, when Star Saga was big, when mm-hmm. we all got all of it, uh, yeah. the kids had gotten me the tackle box yeah that's perfect for carrying <laughs> all of star saga in one little box yeah well okay it's not little but it's a it's a big box that's pretty easy to pack yeah it it's a, it's a nice way to carry all that stuff it really is and um i've still just got the regular box yeah yeah which works <laughs> yes it does <laughs> i think i got two things inside that like the, <laughs> the, the the nameless uh map pieces yeah. are, are in there too yeah but um, but yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a fun time. Yes, it sure is. We should probably put a wrap on that because this has been I, a, uh, yeah we covered a lot of ground. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys for uh, checking out the the podcast. Thank you all for being with us through 2022. Yeah, and, definitely. And we hope you continue with us into 2023. And don't forget to follow us on all the social media things. Yeah, I don't you know have that in front of me right it's now. It's okay, because they know what the social media things are, because yeah. they see us on there. <laughs> yeah, we're always on there. So Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram. Instagram. Uh, you can listen to us on Spotify, Podbean, all sorts of places where you can get podcasts, because it just feeds it out. Find plenty over YouTube. on TikTok, YouTube. Uh, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, we didn't get to do a TikTok live for this one, because my battery was at, like... Yeah, 50%, and that wouldn't have lasted. No, no, that wouldn't have lasted. Because, <laughs> well, I have another podcast to record. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Happy 2022, <laughs> and Happy New Year's to everybody. Happy New Year's, yes.
games. That's the idea, right? Yeah. Play, play. That's play that's your games. that's your New Year's resolution. I know Rick was saying <laughs> his, his is going to be don't get into more new games. Yeah, play what I have. Play what you have. <laughs> yeah. But if you don't have Firefight, we encourage you to make that a New Year's resolution. <laughs> that's play, a good one. Play more Mantic games. Yes. <sighs> wow. 22 is almost over. <laughs> yeah. It came by fast. Like. At the end of year. So pretty much October till now, just like, blink, you're done. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. Ah. And now, and now that it's the post show segment. Oh, here we go. I get some, I get to play with some ice. Yes. So <coughs> you can take what you want out of that. You can keep Bag it. of toys. Bag of toys. You can keep it here or you can take it home. Oh, wow. So what did you use on these? Because this turned out really good. It, it literally is, um, I think it's a satin teal. Okay. Uh, Rust-Oleum spray paint with white uh, like that's spray perfect. paint. And hitting it while both are still wet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't do any dry brush on it or anything. It's just straight spray Don't paint. Don't need to because that turned out really great. I'm going to snag those four. All right. Because it's pretty much a set. Yeah. <laughs> I, I actually had them printing on <coughs> sets of, what was it, three for, like, the big ones and, one. and sets of four for the spiky ones. Yeah. And so I did, like, I think I wound up doing four, four sets of the spiky. I think it was five sets for the uh, other ones. I really need to get my printer back up and around. Yeah. <laughs>